Hello everybody, Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel and today is Thursday, June the 15th, 2023. Hard to believe it's already that late in the year. Today what I thought I would do up on the channel is take a look at the newly released version 12 of Debian and um, I'm do a system setup. I'll actually set it up uh, for you. I'm going to use our virtual machine manager to do that and then I'll do a product review of Debian 12 after I've get it, gotten it set up in the virtual machine. And we'll take a look at that right after this. So let's get started. This is the website right here, and this is the link you'll click on. Uh, I'll put links to all of these things I show you here in the show notes down below, so don't worry about trying to copy it down, or you know, you can also rewatch the uh, video if you like. But anyway, uh, here's the download link, and once you click on that, it will take you out to the uh, site to download the file itself, and uh, I'll show you that in a moment. So let's go out, first of all, to the blog that introduces uh, Debian 12 and it's Debian 12 codename bookworm and uh, you probably know that Debian codenames all of its uh, versions, its distros of uh, Debian um, from Toy Story characters and so bookworm is one of those. So this is Debian 12. <clears throat> now I use Debian 10 and 11 on my Raspberry Pis and I've been running Debian 10 and 11. They're, it's a stable operating system, extremely stable operating system, uh, which is one of the good things about Debian, but uh, one of the bad things about Debian is the fact that things change very slowly with Debian. So you get, oftentimes get outdated uh, applications, and that's why it's stable, because it's been tested for, you know, a couple of years before you even get it. Um, but some people like cutting edge and uh, bleeding edge and uh, the latest and greatest, and so, you know, Debian has not been in the past one of those operating systems that those types of folks uh, go for. However, Debian 12 changes the game, and I'll show you why. Let's look at the blog. On June the 10th, 2023, uh, this blog was released, and it says, after one year, nine months, and 28 days of development, the Debian project is proud to present its new stable version 12, codenamed Bookworm. So Bookworm is going to be supported here, it says, for the next five years, thanks to the combined efforts of the the Debian security team and the Debian long-term support team. And it says, following the 2022 general resolution about non-free firmware, it says, we have introduced a new archive area, making it possible to separate non-free firmware from the other non-free packages. And so uh, that's something that's new in Debian 12 as well. Um, you'll be able to not only get regular Debian uh, repository packages, you know, the packages from the Debian repository, but in Debian 12, uh, if you're running the GNOME desktop, you'll be able to uh, take advantage of flat packs, and I'll show you how to do that. So in Debian 12 here, it ships with several desktop environments, and there they are listed here. Um, GNOME 43 desktop, uh, KDE Plasma 5.27, LXDE 11, uh, LXQ 1.2.0, Mate 1.26 and XFCE, the lightest of the bunch, 4.18. Now, this is an important thing right here. It says this release contains over 11,089 new packages for a total of 64,419 packages, while over 6,296 packages have been removed as obsolete. 43,254 packages were updated in this release. So you get quite a few packages here in this release, guys. 64,419. Um, Arch Linux probably beats that, but um, you know I've used Arch in the past. But you know, uh, for a non-Arch repository or a distribution with its repository, um, this is quite a few packages, and so you can take advantage of that. All right, let's, uh, let's go on over to. Uh, the image itself, let me see here, I've got this twice. Um, 
scrolling over to the image. And so what I did was I downloaded uh, from the download link, uh, which I showed you, which I said will be in the show notes. Um, I came over to this uh, CD image Debian.org site after I downloaded the image, which is a net installer, and that's what I recommend you use. So if you go back here, and let's just click on the download here. Uh, there it is. And so this is the net installer that uh, I recommend you use. Uh, you will be, you will have to be rather connected to the internet, of course, when you download this because it'll uh, grab things from the internet as it installs. And uh, so it is a Debian 12.00 AMD64 netinst.iso file. All right, so... Uh, there are installation guide, release notes, uh, verification guide, and that type, type of thing down here. You can take advantage of those. Uh, if you want to install the uh, image uh, onto a USB stick, here's a link to, to do that. I use the Raspberry Pi Imager to do that, and that's what I use to create my um, operating system on a USB stick when I installed it on my uh, Acer Aspire laptop which is running as my daily driver now on that laptop so I like Debian 12 so much I replaced the operating system uh, Linux distro that was uh, already installed on that that I'd been using for a while and I replaced it with Debian 12 that's that's how good it is so uh, I downloaded the file and so let's go out to I'm using PC man FM and if I go to my uh, downloads folder here is the file right here Debian 12 um, 00 AMD 64 netinst.iso all right so but is that a good download so let's check it out all right, so if I go back over here and I go up to the CD image.debian.org site here is the file same file I downloaded and this is the SHA 512 sum against that file this is the hash that's created when you do a SHA-512 sum. And so what we'll need to do is to run a SHA-512 sum against the one I downloaded and match it against this file and see if it's the same. The importance of that is, again, if it isn't the same, it means it got changed in some way, which means it most likely got corrupted. It's, you know, highly unlikely that a man in the middle attack grabbed the file and changed it on the way down. but. It's possible, but uh, more, most likely what happened is the file got corrupted. All right, so let's, uh, how do you do that? All right, so how do you run a SHA-512 sum against this uh, downloaded file? There are two different ways of doing it. You can run a uh, utility uh, that often comes pre-installed on your uh, Linux distro if you're running in Ubuntu or Debian-based uh, Linux distro. Not sure about Arch or... Uh, RPM, you know, like a Red Hat version. But um, if you don't have it, it's called GTK Hash, and you can download it and install it. And that's what I'm going to be using to do the GUI check on this SHA-512 sum. If you uh, don't want to use that and you want to run it from the terminal, you can run a terminal command to do the same thing. So I'm going to run both versions and show you how to do it. All right, so let's go ahead and um, I'm going to pull up the GTK hash utility that I have running here. And here it is. And I'm running AV Linux MX Edition. It came pre-installed. And so there it is. And so I, I click on that, bring it down to the middle of the screen. Okay, and so this is the GUI version of the checker. All right, so I'm gonna go out to um, use PC Man FM and go out to my downloads folder and grab this file. And so I'm going to do a, well, actually, I can do it a different way than this. It's an easier way to do it is to come up here, click the up arrow, and then go out to uh, the downloads folder. This is the preferred way of doing it, actually. <clears throat> and <clears throat> now that I've got that up, let's find the file, which is right here, and let's uh, click open. And so I've got the file loaded here in the, the, the file window. All right, so let's grab this file here. And let's right click and copy it and then let's come back to the GTK hash utility and right click in the check field and paste it and so this is what's going to be checking against this hash of this file so uh, you have to load that in the check field of the GTK hash utility 
in order to properly check it. Now, the SHA-512 is not listed in my list here of hashes. Um, and so what I did was I went up to Edit and Preferences, and I put a check mark in the 512, SHA-512 block. So if I uncheck that, you see that it goes away. But if I put a check mark in there, it comes back. And so I can then close this. And so there it is. So now that I got the file loaded, I'm going to run hash on this. Click the hash button, let it run the hash. Uh, 512, SHA 512, or 5, yeah, SHA 512. Okay, so now if I come up here, you'll notice there's a check mark in this window. And then when you come down, there's a check mark here in the SHA 512 field. That means these two files match. So that means the downloaded file that I have on my system that I'm going to be installing in Vert Manager for the virtual machine uh, is good and I don't have to worry about it. So that was the GUI version of how to go about doing this. If you don't want to use that, and again, like I said, if you want to use the terminal, and then let's uh, change into the uh, downloads folder. All right, and I'm going to run an LSLH against the file and uh, with a folder, and I'm going to grep for the file. And there it is. And so we have the Debian 1212 AMD 64 netinst.iso file here. So I'm going to copy this file here. So I'm going to highlight it and right click and copy. And then I'm going to come down and run the command SHA 512 sum. And then I'm going to do a, a shift control or control shift V and paste that in. All right, Let's paste the file in. And then I'm going to hit the enter key to run the SHA-512 sum against it. And it's going to generate a file. Okay, so there is the hash that it, that it created. So let's go back out to the website. And let's right click and copy the file again. This is the one that is provided by Debian. Let's go back to the terminal and let me go ahead and paste that in using a uh, control shift. Uh, v and so we have the file here as well. All right, so now it, if you look at these two files, we have to match this file here against this file. All right, and it appears at the end of the file 7e5086, 7e5086, you know, this file visually matches this file, so that means that the SHA 512 sum. Uh, validated our download as being good. All right, so that's the second method that I mentioned that you can use. Okay, so now that we know we have a good file that we've downloaded, uh, it's not a corrupted file, it matches the hash of the uh, 512 um, SHA-512 sum uh, on the website, let's go ahead and fire up the hypervisor that we're going to load this uh, ISO file into, this net installer. And I'm choosing Vert Manager or Virtual Machine Manager as opposed to VirtualBox. Now, you can choose the hypervisor you want. I choose Virtual Manager as my hypervisor of choice. So I'm going to click uh, here the Start menu and type in VIR. And it pulls up the Virtual Machine Manager. I'm going to click it and run it. Then the password, and here it is. So this is Virtual Machine Manager if you've never used it. Uh, you'll need to learn how to use Virtual Machine Manager, but I'm just going to use this one for demonstration purposes. All right, to get started, uh, I'm going to click on File and New Virtual Machine. And now, Virtual Machine Manager, unlike VirtualBox, uses a QEMU KVM, uh, which is a Level 2 and a Level 1 hypervisor. This is a KVM as a Level 1 because it's the kernel virtual machine. It's built into the kernel. Come down here, it says, choose how you would like to install the operating system. I'm going to choose local install ISO because I have an ISO file. I'm going to click forward and then choose the ISO or the CD-ROM install media. I'm going to click the browse button and go out, click the downloads folder and find the Debian 1200 AMD64 NetInst ISO. Select it and choose volume. All right, so it loads it into this browse window. Now, unlike VirtualBox, um, Vert Manager likes to automatically detect your uh, operating system from the ISO and if this box is 
check by default. It tries to do that. Now, it didn't find anything. It says none detected. So I'm going to uncheck it. And I'm just going to start typing Debian in here. And I'm going to choose the latest version that it offers other than 12. And so that would be Debian 10 here in this case. So it thinks it's Debian 10, but that's good enough. And then I'm going to click forward. For memory and CPU settings, I'm going to give this thing 4096 of uh, megabytes of memory, which is 4 gigs. I'm going to give it two CPUs. I've got uh, four available, so that's fine. I'm going to click forward, and then I'm going to enable storage for this virtual machine. I'm going to create a disk image, and I'm going to give it 32 gigabytes of virtual machine disk space. Click forward. I'm going to name this uh, Debian 12 uh, as the name of the uh, virtual machine. And then I want to customize configuration before the install, so I'm going to put a check mark in that box. I'm not going to worry about the network selection. It's going to be on NAT, and that's fine. Now I'm going to click Finish, and it's going to go out to the um, configuration section. Okay. So we've got the name is Debian 12. Here's the UUID. It's uh, shut off at the moment. Um, I could put a title and description in there. I'm going to leave it for now. I'm not going to put anything there. The chipsets, Q35 is just fine, and the firmware is BIOS. For the OS information, the operating system, it thinks it's 10, but it's actually uh, Debian 12. CPUs is 2. Uh, memory is 4096. And the only other thing I need to check here, I believe, is uh, for the NIC. Yeah, I'm using a virtual network default NAT, and it's named VIRTIO. That's fine. Doesn't know what the IP address is. We're going to use DHCP. All right, and so I'm going to go back up to the overview here and um, click Begin Installation. And there it is. And I'm going to use the graphical installer. You can reg use the uh, regular install here if you wanted to, or advanced options. Um, you can do accessible dark contrast installer menu. That is for uh, the uh, you know accessibility for virtual, uh, for the blind, or near blind rather, uh, visually impaired. And so that that's something that's neat that's built into Debian as well. And then uh, help here if you need help, or install with speech synthesis. And this is for folks who might, uh, you know, be hearing impaired. Okay, so I'm going to go up to the graphical installer. I could use just regular install. That is the in cursors type view. I'm just going to do the graphical installer and go from that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the enter key here. I want to go up and I'm going to select view and I'm going to choose full screen. All right, so here we are. We're at the Debian 12 installer, and by default, it, it lands on English. And so I'm going to come down and click Continue. And it says, Select your location. I'm in the United States, and so it selected that by default, which is good. Click Continue. American English is the keyboard setup. Okay, and so I'm going to click Continue here. And so it's now loading the additional components. This does take a little while to... Uh, to do the net install, but it's well worth it. And the net install gives you a lot of uh, different options. And so that's what I like about it. This is different from a regular installer. If you've never done a net install before, the, it's actually the preferred method for most folks. All right, so host name, I'm just gonna call it Debian here. Click continue. For domain name, I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'm just gonna say no domain name and just say continue, leave that blank. All right, for root password, I'm going to go ahead and get it my super secret password for root. And tab twice down to the uh, repeat field and go ahead and verify it. All right, and then click continue. If it matches, it'll continue on. Now it's asking me for the full name of the user, and that's the full name, not the, not the username. So I'm going to put in my name, and I'm going to click continue here. It's asking me for the username, so I'm going to put in Data Pioneer. Click Continue. 
And now I'm going to choose a password for that new user, Data Pioneer. Let me put that in. Tab twice, down to the verify field, and put in re-enter re the password. Whoop, let me learn how to type. All right, so I've re-entered it. Click continue, it matched. Now it says let's configure the clock, and so the clock is the Eastern time zone. Click continue. Now it's detecting the disks and uh, getting ready to partition those disks. And you can do several different methods here. Now you can do a guided use entire disk. You can use a guided use entire disk and set up uh, the logical volume manager, which is probably preferred. Uh, guided use entire disk and set up encrypted logical volume manager. Uh, and that is actually very preferred if you're going to put this on a uh, bare metal like a laptop because if you lose your laptop or somebody grabs your laptop it's encrypted they're not going to be able to get into your system you know, they, they would, could steal your laptop but they're not going to be able to get your data and the other method is manual now I'm going to for purposes of this demonstration I'm just going to do the guided use entire disk and click continue this is the only disk that's out there which is that 32 gigabyte disk um, and so I'm going to go ahead and it's selected already click continue and uh, now you have several options here for partitioning you can put all files in one partition and that's recommended for new users and that's great that's fine it'll work fine you can separate your home partition here so you have a separate home partition um, for away from your regular files in, in the installation that's the method I'm going to use and then you can separate your home var and temp partitions if you want to get down to a little more nitty-gritty um, this is what most people would select but I'm going to go ahead and do separate the home directory uh, in its own partition the advantage of doing that is if later you upgrade the system um, then when you do that the home directory gets preserved it doesn't get overwritten okay so this is why I'm doing it I'm going to click continue. Now, this is just a virtual machine, so it doesn't really much matter. All right, so this is the structure. It shows you what it's going to do. This F here under block means it's formatting. So it's going to format EXT4 for the primary partition, which is 11.8 gigs. It's going to format the swap as swap, and then it's going to format the home directory, which is 21.6 gigabytes, as EXT4 as well. And that's a journaling file system, and it's logical. Now it says it's finishing the partitioning and writing the changes to disk this is your opportunity to stop if you made a mistake because once you continue here you can't go back so I'm going to click continue and you get one more chance I was wrong about that you get one more chance here and uh, and if you don't want to write to disk you can leave it at no hit continue and it'll go back if I want to I hit the down arrow and select yes and click continue all right so it's starting the basis system install and it's going to install the entire system and all the packages starting with the core packages this is going to take a while so I'm going to stop the video and come back when it's completed okay so we're at the point now where it's asking we want to configure the package manager and it says if you wish to scan more media please insert another uh, media it could probably a CD or a DVD uh, in this case I'm not uh, installing any additional media I'm only installing the Debian GNU Linux 12.0.0 bookworm uh, firmware uh, and uh, core installation so I'm going to say no here and click continue and now it's asking for the uh, package manager so it's, is it you know what uh, uh, mirror do you want to use so let's use the United States because that's the country that I reside in and the closer you are to the repository download site the better off you are so I'm gonna click continue here and then the actual mirror that I want to use is the one that's selected by default which is the deb.debian.org so I want to click continue there it asked me if I'm using a proxy I am not so I'm gonna leave that blank for none click continue and then it's going to go ahead and configure the apt and continue on. So I will stop the video again and pick it back up when it completes that process. Okay, so it's stopped again in the process. And this is something called the popularity contest. And 
it's got a uh, kind of misleading uh, for configuring the popularity contest. It's basically asking you, will you allow Debian to uh, monitor uh, statistics uh, to so the developers can see, you know, what's happening with your system, your particular system. It'll upload that to the developers to let them see that. I'm going to choose no here because this is a virtual machine, but now in bare metal, um, I did select yes here. So it's I think it's important that the Developers uh, have an opportunity to see what's going on, not your personal data, but to see what's going on with the operating system. So we'll go, I'm going to go ahead and say no here. And continue. Okay, so at this point uh, of the installation, you get to choose what software you want to be installed. Now, by default, you've got the Debian desktop environment and the GNOME desktop environment. Um, and for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to make it shorter than it would be. I would select all of these, but I'm just going to select the KDE Plasma at this point and hit the tab key or the space bar rather to put a check mark in the uh, box next to the KDE Plasma. And that's the only one I'm going to install other than the SSH server. I'll put, I'll scroll down to that, hit the uh, space bar and put a check mark in there and then click continue. And it's going to start the installation process. This is going to take a while. So when this completes, I will come back. Okay, so it uh, completed the uh, installation of the software and it stopped at configuring the GDM3 or SDDM. That's the GNOME uh, Display Manager uh, version 3. I'm going to go ahead and select the default and continue on and let it uh, complete its uh, select and install software portion. This could take uh, some additional time so I'm going to uh, once again I'll uh, pause the video and come back when it's completed. Okay I'm back and it's completed the install portion and now it's asking to install the grub bootloader and I'm going to go ahead and say yes here. So I'm going to click continue and it's asking for the device that I want to install the grub on and it would be that device right there the forward slash dev forward slash VDA select that and click continue and let it install the grub bootloader this should not take very long it's finishing the installation up now and not quite sure how long this is going to take but if it appears to be taking longer than it should then I will pause the video again and come back okay I'm back and the uh, installation has completed so we're at the finish the installation uh, so it says please choose continue to reboot so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and so I'm gonna hit continue All right, so it's rebooting now, and um, once it's booted up and gets into the operating system, um, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, this is the login screen. I'm going to go ahead and put in my password. And uh, hit the enter key. And here we are. Okay, so this is, uh, we're on a virtual machine, so I'm going to have to, uh, didn't come up to full screen, so I'm going to have to tweak this a little bit, but uh, we're at the welcome screen now. I'm going to go ahead and click uh, next, and now it says um, select your keyboard layout, that's English, so I'm going to click next. Location services, I'm going to leave that turned on for now, the virtual machine anyway. Connect your to your online accounts, I'm going to say skip that. And now we're all done, so start using Debian GNU Linux. Alright, so here we are at the desktop. And so let me get to activities and put in display. 
and uh, let's see here displays so the resolution is at 1024 70, 768 so let me scroll up and select my resolution which is 1920 by 1080 16 by 9 go ahead and apply that setting and keep the changes all right so we are in the operating system I'm gonna go ahead and close this and here we are on the desktop so this concludes part one of the series uh, system setup and product review uh, this being the system setup portion and rather than continue on and make this uh, video even longer I'm gonna go ahead and break it now and uh, you can watch part two to see the review portion of the Debian 12 uh, Linux. I highly recommend it. Now that we've got it installed in Virtual Machine, we can take a look at this operating system, which is an Ubuntu killer in my book. And, um, and so I'll see you in part two. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you thought it was helpful, go ahead and uh, click on the uh, thumbs up there at the bottom of the screen. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. This is Data Pioneer. See you in part two. Take care. Bye-bye.